According to a Nielsen report, alcohol sales are up 54% in March of this year versus March of last year, and online alcohol sales have gone up 500% from late April of 2020 versus last year. Clearly, alcohol consumption is on the rise due to the pandemic, and one of the main side effects of alcohol consumption is the hangover, largely due to dehydration. But why is alcohol so dehydrating in the first place? And is there anything that we can do to mitigate these side effects? Well, hit that like button, stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Sandy Baird, welcome back to another video. In addition to the numbers that I mentioned a moment ago, according to a morning consult poll, 16% of adults have claimed that they have increased their alcohol consumption during the pandemic, and specifically one in four millennials have reported an increase in alcohol consumption. In this video, I'm gonna run through really briefly how alcohol gets processed in the body, I'm gonna talk about why it's so dehydrating, and then we'll talk about what you can do to help mitigate that, and it's a really simple step, and it's not just drinking a glass of water in between each cocktail like you've heard a million times before. All right, so let's dig in. So alcohol is sent to the liver for processing. The enzymes in the liver convert the alcohol into acetaldehyde, which is toxic in high doses, and then the liver converts the acetaldehyde into acetate. Alcohol decreases the amount of vasopressin that your body can produce. Vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone, which basically tells the body to hold onto water, so that limits the amount of urine that your kidneys can produce. So suppressing this hormone exacerbates the diuretic effect, leading to dehydration. Vasopressin is produced in the hypothalamus and then gets transferred into the blood with two main target sites, the blood vessels and the kidneys. Water is being flushed out faster than the alcohol can be processed by the liver. So your blood alcohol concentration levels can quickly rise unless you replenish your body's supply of water. Also, when you're losing a lot of water, whether that's sweating it out, running a half marathon, or just urinating it out when you're drinking, you're gonna lose electrolytes as well, which are essential minerals like sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and these do three things. So they regulate our fluid volume, they help with our muscle contractions, and then they help with sending nerve signaling. So if we can do something to preload our body with electrolytes, or at least try to replace them throughout a night of drinking, that's gonna go a long way in mitigating that dehydration. And there's a lot of different ways to take in electrolytes. So coconut water, for example, had its heyday a few years ago, and that one is mainly potassium. There's not too much sodium or any of the other electrolytes in coconut water, but it's better than nothing. A lot of runners tend to eat bananas, right, because it prevents cramping. And that's one of the things, one of the symptoms of low electrolytes is that your body tends to cramp up. And that's just because it doesn't have that proper muscle contraction function that electrolytes provide. So bananas are a good source of calcium, but as you may have noticed, they're not the most salty food, so there's not a lot of sodium in them, and they're lacking in some of the other electrolytes as well. You could eat salty chips, but that's just sodium, and you know who knows what other food colorings or other ingredients are in there that you might not necessarily want. Gatorade is another popular choice, and that's gonna contain two of the electrolytes. So Gatorade has sodium and potassium, and we'll talk a little bit more about that breakdown later. Another popular way to get in electrolytes is those tablets, and they're usually artificially sweetened tablets. Um, Noon is one of the more popular brand amongst runners and cyclists, at least here in California. And they have a moderate amount of electrolytes, you know, a full spectrum profile of the different electrolytes. But in the quest to make them like low calorie or like health foods, they have taken out the glucose and replaced it with an artificial sweetener. And the reason that that is a problem is because we actually need glucose to transport sodium across a cell wall. There's pumps within the cell wall and those things need glucose to shuttle the sodium across. So you're not gonna get the most efficient absorption of electrolytes unless it's paired with glucose. So the best source of electrolytes is gonna be something that has glucose as well as a full spectrum of the different minerals. And so I'm gonna show you an example here of Gatorade, which is when you know the more popular electrolyte mix versus something like Vitalite, which is a, a more full spectrum electrolyte mix. So let's look at the numbers here. So I've taken the liberty of converting to equivalent serving sizes here so that you can get um, good numbers comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. And when we look at the Gatorade, the first thing that we see is that it has 150 calories. A lot of that's just coming from extra sugar. Whereas something like the Vitalite, and, and these come under different brand names, right? Scratch, Ultima, Liquid IV, Goo Hydration, Vitalite, those are all some of the more popular ones that you can find online. But something like Vitalite per the equivalent serving size is only gonna have 80 calories. So next let's look at potassium. So Gatorade only has 75 milligrams of potassium compared to 238 milligrams in the Vitalite. And then when you look at the sodium, Gatorade is pumped full of sodium at 270 milligrams versus 166 of the Vitalite, 
But what's most important here is that we're totally missing phosphorus and we're totally missing magnesium in the Gatorade electrolyte profile. So over my years of doing endurance bike riding and running and playing soccer and powerlifting, I've tried a lot of different electrolyte powders and pills and tablets. And the one powder that I found that I really like was called Scratch. And they have amazing flavors as long as you're sticking with the fruity kind of flavors. There's a few that are not my favorites, let's just say. Uh, but I was actually looking at the pricing and I realized that it's quite expensive per serving. And so there are a few different ones on the market that are at a better price point. One that tastes really great is called Vitalite, and I'll link that down in the description below. Um, I've tried the lemon lime, fla lemon lime flavor, that's my favorite, and then the grape flavor, that one's really good as well. And it's always just a really consistent mix. You just scoop it out, you mix it into your water, and there you go, you've got your electrolytes. And I've never been a bartender. I cannot recommend different cocktails that you would mix up with your electrolytes. I mean, they do come in fruity flavors, so I guess there could be the option of trying to mix them into your drinks. But really, more practically, if you can just mix up like one serving of electrolytes and down that before you consume any alcoholic beverages, and then maybe one more serving at the end of night, right before you go to bed, that's gonna help a lot to keep the dehydration at bay. So this video was a little bit of a topic shift from my usual topics of moving your body better and getting your body out of pain, but let me know what you thought about it in the comment section. And then if you have any other video ideas or topic ideas that you would like to see covered, please let me know that as well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you can do that right over here. And then there's other videos over here that you might be interested in as well. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.